This episode of the Sleuthcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast-to-order, veteran-owned coffee company. They are a world-class hand-roasted micro-batch coffee, which means that they that all of your beans are fresh roasted after you ordered. Fair Choice certified USDA organic. Coffee's coming K-Cup. Gift cards are available and free shipping over $50. Dollars, and you can save even more with a subscription service over at the ironbeancoffee.com. Again, that is ironbeancoffee.com, who are the Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. Hey, Kyle, was that a good ad read? I wasn't paying attention. Of course, you weren't. Yes, it was. I mixed it up a little bit. Okay. <laughs> You know, you know, there there was a lot of people, especially in the fall season, uh, uh, who were really wanting me to do the Iron Bean uh, ad reads. <laughs> and where are they now? Yeah, that is a good question. Where are they? Talking about you, Nomad, <laughs> if you ever even <laughs> actually hear this. I don't know if I think he listens to the audio versions. And since he listens to the audio versions, he's not privileged to this portion of the show. This is just for the YouTube audience and the live audience. Audio <laughs> people don't get this episode of the show. It's secret. It's it the secret. mysterious secret part of the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got we got we got we got a couple of basketball games to talk about, Jared. So let's let's hop right into it. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? I have no complaints. That's that's as plainly as I can say that. Well, I got complaints about the basketball team, so let's let's get right into it. <laughs> oh, okay, I, I take that back. I have a couple complaints. All right, so I have a got couple, couple complaints. Got a couple of games over the past week here. Uh, so let's let's hop into the first one here. Ohio State heading on over to Madison, Wisconsin, take on the Badgers, <laughs> where they where they fell seventy eight to sixty eight. It was <laughs> they were down as much as nineteen, I believe. Uh, let me look. Nope, seventeen. Apologies. They were down as much as seventeen at one point in the game. Brought it within four towards the end of the game, but then eh, happened. Yeah, it was a bad. It is a, a bad game. Let's just let, let's let's call let's call a spade a spade. That was a bad basketball game for Ohio State. Yeah, um, yeah they 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 shot fifteen. I mean, I mean, they shot fifty percent from from the ground from the floor, thirty for sixty. But they shot fifteen percent from the three, only making three of their nineteen. They, and they only and they only hit the um free throw line 10 times and only making half of those Ugh, a big ugh there yeah it's uh they tied the game 3-3 ohio state wisconsin tied the game at 3-3 wisconsin scored the first three points ohio state rallies back ties the game at three and then wisconsin takes the lead and never gives it up as, as kyle said there was a point in the game in which Ohio State closed it down pretty close. Was it like 55-61? Am I seeing that correctly, Kyle? That's about as close as it got in the uh, in the second half. Uh, it, but it's they they never felt in this game. Even when they, I mean, they rallied at points, right? Like they completely rallied at points to get back into the game. But when your big huge rallies shrink the lead or the deficit down to mm. seven points. Like that's just not a game that you're in. That's just, no. you, you can't rely. You can't rely on that. No, no, you, you, you absolutely can't. Um, hey Kyle, yeah, uh, uh, I mean, if you I mean, had to point at one, one, one thing, one, if you had to point at one thing, what's that one thing?
I mean, I'm looking at that three point shot percentage. It, it, it's really tough. It's 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 being cold at the wrong times. <laughs> it, it really is. It's player players who are needing to make their shots aren't, and I mean. You were three for 19 from the threes. You shot 50% from the free throws. Like, that's just... Yeah, you're just not going to win games with that. It's... Especially on the road. Especially on the road there. Yeah, like, EJ I, every, Liddell... Everything, I mean, a lot of the other things I, I liked, like... They, they had 11 turnovers, which is... It's... It's manageable from games yeah. that they've had in the past. Still want to see that in single digits, but it was. It was Wisconsin a lot more had nine though. They had nine, yeah. But what what really made what really made Wisconsin just take over in this game was that they were being a lot more physical. Ohio State yeah. had twenty fouls in this game. Wisconsin only only let up fourteen fouls too, which showed right there from the free throw line where Wisconsin doubled the the attempts that Ohio State had. And we'll, we'll talk about this in the next game too here. It's kind of a recurring trend here. But yeah, they just they were a lot more physical in the paint, got the fouls, and they hitting their free throws there. Yeah, um, I have to wonder, Kyle, you look at the three point percentage being terrible. You look at, uh, you know, not and not not to get ahead of ourselves and talk about the next game. I I and I know this isn't the first time I've brought this up, but um, Kyle, I forgot to change the dang the dang frame. Hold on. Uh, what on earth? What on earth are we doing with Arns? He turns the ball over. He's a liability on defense. Um, and he's not he's not scoring. I you know, I, I don't like to single out players. I really, really don't, but uh, it's it's getting real frustrating to me. And I wonder if being a little too loyal to a guy because he's been on the team for a while. But I see a lot of really nice young talent on this basketball team who Mm -hmm. could or should be getting more minutes. Brown, Russell, Sotos. Yeah, he's, yeah, he just has not been, he just has not been that good um, behind the arc as of recently. So the past few games here um, against, against Wisconsin, 25%. 0% against Northwestern, and he had five shots there. 33% against Indiana, 20, <clears throat> 20 Nebraska, 25 against Wisconsin. It's, yeah, he just, he's been struggling a lot lately. And as, as you said, Jared, liability on, on defense too. Yeah, I, 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 I like Arns, but I, I really think you need to start getting getting some of the other players involved here. I, I really think it's it's time to take some of those minutes away and get in, um, get, um, have Michi play some more minutes here. Have, um, right. have um, Maliki play some more minutes too. Malachi. Take, take some of, Malachi, thank you. Um, have him play a little bit more too. It's just, yeah, I, I, I just don't know what's going on with with Arndt. It's just he's not shooting as well as what he needs to be. Yeah, it's. I mean, to 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 cheat a little bit, in the Penn State game, he scores three points. In the Wisconsin game, he scores five, scored zero against Northwestern. Six, five. Five, 16. He scored 16 points against Towson. Uh, nine against Penn State the first time. Seven against Duke. Three, or excuse me, six against Florida. Uh, he did have a really nice game against Seton Hall, scoring 17 points. Um, three against Xavier. 
11 against Bowling Green, 6 and 7 at the start of the year. To outside of Kyle, outside of Seton Hall, you know, it's he's and not not that Seton Hall is necessarily I mean, I mean they're they're ranked. So, but outside of Seton Hall, all of his good games have come against lesser opponents. When they've needed him, where has he been? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he and he's all about being behind behind the arc too. He he's only Jared. He's only taken two shots inside the the three point range, only two Which... shots inside the range, and he's made one of those, and that was against Wisconsin here, and that was yeah. a layup. Yeah. It, yeah, it's. I mean, I, I don't. I don't want to turn this into the the Justin Orange yeah. show. That's that's not what it's, I want to yeah. do here. But got it. I, w- I, w- I would like to see. I'd like to see some other players take some minutes away from Orange to help out on the defense side because there, there's times when the defense just looks bad. Like it looks really bad. Like you can't you can't allow 78 points and and hope to win a game. Like there's and then and then the Northwestern game. How how many how many, how many points did they allow? It was way too. It was way too many. Eighty-seven, eighty-seven points against Northwestern too. Like you, you got, you got, you gotta improve that defense. You got it. This is yeah. this is too good of a team to, to lose by letting up 70, 80 points. Yeah, it's, you know, and the other thing is, is like you look at the turnovers and Ohio state's not been good at that this year. They got better. Then they had a 22 day layoff because of COVID, which threw their rhythm off a ton, but the turnovers are getting better, but still a problem. And the, but the, the, the issue I have with that is when you have a really young team, you, you kind of factor that in, right? You kind of factor in that when you have a really young team, there's going to be turnovers, but this isn't a young team. Liddell's been around, Key's been around, Arn's been around, Wheeler's been around. Malachi Brennan's in the one of the only guys in your starting is, you know, the only guy in your starting lineup who you would classify as young. Cal Young's one of your first guys off the bench. He's been around. The, the turnovers are killing them. Um, and they need consistent scoring by someone who is an EJ Liddell. And Malachi Brennan can be that guy. He's been that guy yeah. at certain points this year. He's a young guy. But to me, the guy who probably should be your second scorer, especially if, you know, Liddell's down low and Key is down low, you're really, if you're, because the, 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 the scouting report's out on Ohio State. If you want to beat Ohio State, you get physical with them in the key. You you make sure you you don't let Liddell get to the basket. Mm-hmm. You push him around. You keep things tight. How do you counteract that? By having someone on the outside draining threes. If that person no, can't, can't be Arns, it has to be someone else. No, it can't be EJ Liddell, who seems to be leading the team and making threes for the past few games. Right. And the one thing that I saw again to sort of cheat and, and talk about the Penn State game a tad. And you know, you, you did start to see it in the Wisconsin game as well. Wheeler starting to contribute more on the offense. Where er- early in the year he seemed very content to play defense and pass the ball. And I, I think it's been an adjustment from the coaching staff in particular to say, no, Wheeler, you're capable of scoring, go score. We we don't have a reliable second scorer right now. No, Brennan's young and a bit streaky. That's what it comes with being young, right? And he's getting more and more consistent as the year goes on. Why? Because he's young. It's, it's, this is, this is normal and acceptable and just part of maturing into a college basketball player. But Ohio State needs a reliable second scorer. 
and you know Wheeler's starting to 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 pick that up a tad, and I think that's a good a good place to start. Um, it really would be nice. I think you want it to be Brennan, Brennan on the outside, Wheeler on the outside, Liddell and Key down low, and maybe you get to the point where Kyle Young is healthy enough that he can start with mm. more consistent higher minutes to to come in for Arns because to me that's probably your ideal starting five would you agree with that yeah no I agree I agree 100 percent so I so I think the takeaway from this game here is we'll um head into the ad break here Jared I I think the yeah ugly defense just need to improve on defense and I think it starts with who you have out on the court also, like you just you need to make your outside shots. You just you need to make your outside shots. Fifteen uh, percent from behind the three is when the other team is fifty. If you're fifteen and the other team is fifty behind the three, you're gonna lose. Yeah. Period. That's that's not gonna happen. That's not that's not how you win a basketball game. Not in the Big Ten. Not anywhere. No. All right, Kyle, let's, uh, let's do our first ad read. Um, you already talked a bit about the Iron Bean Coffee Company at the top of the show, how they are, you know, an Ohio-based Marine-owned... Lo- I don't know. I'm assuming you talked about these things as I, as I, as I talked about during the mysterious uh, unaired section of the show. I wasn't listening. I was lost in my own little world. Uh, but the point is, is that they have some amazing coffee. I'm going to talk, you know, talk, talk about the Iron... Bean Coffee Company's very own The Unicorn. Unicorn's one of those unique coffees because it's flavored. But how is it flavored? You might be asking. Jared, what's the flavor? Well, you don't know. That's the fun of it, right? You go, you buy a bag of The Unicorn. What's it going to be? Could it be... Oh, here, here's, some of, here's, some, here's some of what they've been in the past. You don't know what it's going to be. But here's some of the things that's been in the past. If you'd have bought some iron bean coffee on the week of October 9th, it would have been a bourbon pre-lane pie. I can never say that word. Pre, pri, I, I can't say it. Anyway, uh, if you had bought it on the week of 1016, it would have been a gingerbread latte, a frosted pumpkin roll on 1023, a caramel rum crunch on 1030. If you had bought it November 6th, it would have been a strawberry marshmallow. Had you bought it on the week of November 13th, it would have been a winter raspberry swirl. The point is, it's their R&D coffee. It might be the next big coffee. It might be the next coffee that becomes a part of the regular lineup of flavored coffees at Iron Bean Coffee Company. And you'd, you'd essentially get a sneak peek. You get a sneak peek. And by the way, like you can subscribe with all of these coffees. There is a subscribe and save service. Uh, You in in the case of the unicorn, at the very least, you get a 13 percent discount by essentially signing up for the unicorn as a monthly delivery service. You can do that with any of the coffees. I'm not sure if they're all 13 percent or not. I can check. But the point is, is that you can sign up and subscribe and save and with this, it's going to be a different coffee probably every time. How fun is that? If you're not that adventurous, but you want to try out some different flavors, the whole shebang is still currently available. That is 13, 12, 14, something like that. Different flavors of coffee, uh, all in small sampler bags. So you can find your new favorite coffee by testing out all of the coffees. All, all of the coffees that are the non-flavored coffees are available are available in the whole shebang. Um, these are some of your amazing options, and there's so many more options. I can't even begin to name all the coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. So you can go check it out for yourself at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, moving on to the next game here that happened on Saturday. Our state hosting Penn State where they pulled out a close victory, 61 to 56. Yeah. Um, rough, 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 rough start for Ohio state as Penn yeah. state came out of the gate uh, or up by six early. And then Ohio state um, came back, uh, scored a bunch of points early on. 
and then it looked like they were they were about to pull away, like they they were up by ten, they were up by eight, but then Penn State just kept kept it close, like Ohio yeah. State could not could not pull away in that fourth quarter when it seemed like they were going to. Penn State came back, and it was just a constant back and forth in that second court in that second half. But Ohio State pulled out just pulled out a win right at the end there. Yeah, yeah. Um, as Kyle said, this this game, <coughs> excuse me, at the very beginning, kind of felt like, oh boy, here we go again. Um, Penn State scores the first six points of the game. Um, it, it it felt like a real, it felt like a disaster in the making again. Now, luckily, Ohio State's at home this time. Crowd gets behind them, uh, and Penn State goes on. I don't know what was it like a four minute something like that score drought. Yeah, it, it was it was a lot it was a long drought there, uh, but kind of kind of like um, with the Ohio State Wisconsin game where Wisconsin was very physical in the paint. Well, Ohio State was was that way here. Penn State had twenty five um, personal fo- or yeah fouls in in this game to Ohio State's thirteen. Having Ohio State go on the line and shoot 36 attempts. So they, they went 24 for 36. And that's that's getting close to half of your points from the free throw line. Ohio State, again, struggling behind the three yeah. and overall two. They shot 38% from the from the field there. Like it's it just it, it seems like in the past couple of years, Ohio State's just really struggled in the that month of January. Yeah, like they 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 seem to do well in December. Like, oh, it's a good this is a good team, and then January come around, getting right into the meat of the Big Ten schedule, and then, oof, happens. Yeah. It, it, this team always has a bad January. I mean, this year we can blame it on the on the layoff again. They're they they went dormant for twenty two games, um, which is just incredibly unhelpful. <laughs> it's. To to say it mildly is incredibly unhelpful. Um, completely lost their rhythm, and you know, as far as they're they're not scoring. Uh, Kyle already said it. I was trying to find out. I was trying to think of a new way to say it, but Kyle already said it. Like they just aren't shooting well. Period. Like what what else can be said other than that? Like. Maybe the big difference, if you want to, if you want to be realistic about it, if you want to be cold and realistic about it, Kyle is the biggest difference between this game and the Wisconsin game. The fact that Wisconsin, or excuse me, that Penn State was also struggling from behind the three. Because, like, if if Penn State, and of course, you know, then they wouldn't be Penn State if they were capable of this, but. Penn State also shoots for 50% from behind the three the way Wisconsin did a few days ago. It's a different it's a different ball game obviously, right? So Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it just yep, comes absolutely. down to like making your shots. Ohio yeah. State still wasn't. It's yeah. just I mean, you know, in this case neither was Penn State. Yeah, and Ohio State had a had a good game with turnovers 9 nine for this game. So they, yeah. they really took care of the ball in this game and it really showed how Penn state down to 56 points. A lot of it was because Penn state wasn't as physical. It didn't get to the line as much. Uh, and they just were trying to shoot up threes to, to get back into the game to, to, to win the game here. But, but yeah, that's, I haven't, I haven't seen this big of a, free throw difference in a long time. There was a, what is that? 22 free throw attempts uh, difference between Ohio State and Penn State. And that showed a lot about, about EJ Liddell really yeah. getting in there about um, the other players too. Like it's yeah, 36 attempts. That, that tells you just Ohio State what, what Ohio is, State was trying to do, the, their dominance in the paint there. Ohio State is at their best. To me, Watching this basketball team, Ohio State is at their best when they're forcing the other team to foul them. And I get that it is oftentimes the game plan of the other team to not let Ohio State do that, to not let EJ Liddell get the ball down in the paint to allow that to happen. 
Penn State was not able to stop Ohio State from doing that. One, it's one of EJ Liddell's strengths is forcing fouls. It's one of the things EJ Liddell does so well. So he's he gets down in there, he forces some fouls. All it leads to Ohio State winning the game. That's that is their key to success. Is EJ Liddell with the ball in the paint, forcing fouls, getting buckets. Um. That being said, uh, EJ Liddell really struggled shooting the free throws this game. Um, yeah, not what you want to see from EJ Liddell. Uh, you're gonna need to get that figured out. Uh, luckily, you know, Brennan did well and Wheeler did well. Zed Key only shot two, but he made them both. Uh, Kyle Young four for six. Uh, so the rest of the team did okay on, from the charity stripe, but EJ Liddell really struggling there. Um, one of the primary reason why he doesn't break 20 in this game, he scores quote unquote only 19. Uh, but Kyle, once again, uh, like I was talking about when we were talking about, you know, the Wisconsin game, who's the second scorer here? EJ yeah. Liddell uh, almost doubles up the next scorer. He scores 19. Zed Key scores 10. No one else breaks double digits scoring the ball. No. And Arn's having a struggling again here. One for, one four, for four. One for four behind the three there. <laughs> uh, turnovers again from Arn's. Yeah, it's yeah, still so waiting. I mean, we've had moments with in different games of a having somebody be that second score, but these past few games it really haven't. It's it's oh give it to EJ and and hopefully he makes it here type of game. Yeah, and you know, EJ needs to hit his free throws. Like, you want to talk about why was this game so close? Well, I mean, there's six points right there. Like, EJ needs to hit those free throws. And I get like going 100% isn't always going to happen. So, you know, maybe it's four additional points. But again, we need to stop putting everything on EJ. You need to stop putting everything on EJ Liddell. Ohio State needs a second score. And you look mm -hmm. at EJ Liddell's stat line, it's good. You know, no, no complaints, eight rebounds. That's nice. Three assists. That's nice. 19 points. It's unfortunate that that's, that's not good enough because he's not getting any help from anyone else. That being said, he played a lot better than his stat line in this game. EJ Liddell played a lot better than his stat line in this game. Again, like putting Penn state. Oh, it felt like single-handedly in foul trouble. Yeah, exactly, Gangland. When when Brennan shows up, Ohio State dominates. But I would I would almost even amend that to say when Ohio State has a second scorer. And when it's Brennan, he's 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 real capable of taking over a game from a scoring standpoint. We've seen him ha we've seen him do it before. I think he'll do it again. He's a true freshman. Uh, so being streaky and disappearing at times is something that a true freshman will do. Um, yeah. Some, yeah, some, we, yeah, some, just need someone else to take a double team. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, something, something interesting in this game that I don't know if you, if you noticed Jared in that second half, didn't really see how state really try to shoot the three ball. I mean, they only took 12 shots Why? for the entire game. Yeah. They, they only shot three, um, yeah, I think I think they only shot like three attempts behind the arc in that second half, which is no no really, one's hitting them. Yeah, no no one was hitting them there. Yeah, so I'm feed the I mean, ball, Brennan, feed the ball, and it, it hit the free throw line. There was Brennan was fifty percent, but that was off of two attempts. Uh, so could we have seen him take some more shots? Maybe. Wheeler only took one and missed it. Um, Arns, of course, just one for four. It's, it's just that's that's how it's been lately. Um, yeah. Liddell can't also be the best. He can't be the best scorer in the paint, and the best <laughs> three point shooter, and okay, like the second best because Wheeler's probably the best defensive player on the team, and the second best defensive player on the team. Like it, it can't all be on EJ Liddell. It can't all be on EJ Liddell. He's very good, but he's not 
you know, and who is other than LeBron James? He's not LeBron James. You can't just essentially go out there and say, win every game. <laughs> yeah. Gangland says, teach Key how to, how to hook shot threes. I'd pay money to see that. I'd pay money to see that. Um, I'd like to see, I mean, I don't care who the second scorer is. I don't even care if it's the same person game in and game out. It's just somebody. But they need someone else to score, what, 16 to 22 points? Not even that. Not even that. Somebody, somebody who even just like, even just like, Around fifteen points, just just like thirteen. You said sixteen. 15. Are you really? Are you really going to get? Well, you were like nineteen points. EJ's. I said EJ's sixteen to twenty-two. 19. EJ's I... averaging nineteen points per game. Right. I need someone else to to. I don't need someone else to average nineteen twenty points a game. I need someone else on the team, and that's a ro- as a rotating responsibility. It can be Zed Key one game. It can be Brennan the next game. It can be Wheeler the game after that. I just need someone else to score points and to take some attention off VJ of Liddell. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it doesn't have to be the same person every game. That's not, I, I don't think anyone on this team is currently capable of that. I think Brennan will get there. I think Brennan will get there. I don't know if he gets there this season or not. I think he can be a person who reliably scores points every single game. But I don't think he's that person yet. No. I just need someone else. And let's lower it down to Kyle's 15 points. I just, I need Liddell to score 20. And I need someone else on the team to score 15. Mm -hmm. And then everyone else can get their eights and their nines and their sixes but I need someone else to get hot during the course of the game so that it isn't all on EJ Liddell's back all the time. Yep. All right. In the next, all right, that moves on to Ohio state's upcoming games here. So they have, they have a rescheduled game. Well, not rescheduled, but a makeup game where they are going to be playing Indiana university, Purdue university, Indianapolis or ooey pooey. <laughs> you did it. You actually it. said it. Yeah. And then uh <clears throat> and then this Saturday they will be home again taking on Nebraska. Hopefully they don't need to go into overtime to <laughs> to beat Nebraska again uh this Saturday. Kyle, question from the Ask Sloopcast mailbag. This one's from Nomad. What is the highest seed the basket bucks can grab in March? What is the lowest seed? Where, where, so halfway through January, what are our expectations right now? What, what's the high I, seed? I'd what's say, the I'd, low seed? I, I say right now, the highest that I see them right now is maybe a three seed. I would say, I, I was going to say four, but again, we're talking say three seed. And then we're talking the ceiling lowest, here. And then the lowest I see them right now is like an, eight seed. I think they're three to eight from what I'm seeing. Kyle, I could, I think it's possible they don't make the tournament. No, not, not from what I'm seeing right now. No. Well, cause no, no, no one, no one said, no one said the key phrase. If everyone stays healthy. This team's lost without Liddell. What happens yes. if Liddell misses three or four weeks or more? Well, that, that, that's that's a lot of teams too, Jared. But again, like who's number two on the team? Yeah, and uh, Gangland brings up a good point too. We're still waiting on a couple of players to come back too. Towns suing. I think we've been waiting on Towns and suing for a while now. Mm-hmm. Um just sitting around waiting for towns and suing. That's <laughs> what I, I, what do you, what do you want me to say to that? Like Ohio state's been waiting for towns and suing to do something for a while now. 
I mean, I mean, Ohio State sitting sitting nice at um, fourth in the Big Ten standings right now. Uh, they can easily they can easily still win the win the Big Ten uh, regular season here if if things go well. It I, it's just too talented a team to not make the make the tournament here. I I just don't if see Liddell it stays healthy. That's all right. That's if you want to say, Kyle, I will agree with you. If you want to say, if Liddell stays healthy, I will agree with you. Okay. Yes. All right. That's all the but news we have. He, that's all the news we have. We have anything else for the basketball team? Uh, no, that's it. Uh, Gangland says, I don't see how he gets hurt unless it's a bad ankle or something. Um, here's the thing. He's, he gets hurt sometimes. I'm not going to say he's injury prone because he seems to back bounce from his injuries pretty frequently, but he's a very aggressive player. I've seen him. He, he twists his ankle sometimes because he's always in there in the mess. He's willing to throw his body around for better or worse. He's a physical player. I've seen him take some really hard falls. I'm not saying he's injury prone. I am saying he's very aggressive uh, and aggressive to the point where he puts his body at risk at times. I, it's a thing to be worried about. Mm-hmm. All right, Kyle. I uh, want to encourage everyone to uh, join our Discord server. Uh, we talk Ohio State basketball and Ohio State football, and we give alerts for breaking news items. Um, we also just have like an off-topic area where we talk about random stuff and pop culture and food and pets and all sorts of weird stuff. Um we have an entire channel dedicated to making fun of Michigan. Um, that's it. Like it's, it's, it's Thank a fun you. server. We all, we all, we all hang out. We have fun. We have, uh, we have some bots that do some funny things. Uh, for example, I like how you did Teton fact. Kingland. I don't think that's right. And, and it gave you the poo <laughs> emoji or the poo gif. I don't think that's what that's supposed to do. <laughs> I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's what that command is supposed to do. I, it is accurate. <laughs> accurate <laughs> it is accurate. It it's funny. Like I it wasn't right. It might have been. Like the the fact might be that that Michigan equals poo. That that might be the fact. I don't know. Z Spikes, how long you been in here, buddy? I didn't know you were here. He's been here for a while. I I, He's been here I for asked a while. the question. That's why I asked. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Come on, man. He, he was just lurking. There's nothing wrong with lurking. I was asking the question. That was me asking a question. Why is it that if I ask a question, I get criticized? It was a question. Questions are good. Questions are important. No, I like Ooh. lurkers. Lurkers are great. I, I just found out that Ooey Pooey is uh-huh. 1 in 14. That's, that is both Ooey and Pooey. <laughs> that is <laughs> okay and on that note kyle do you have anything in kyle's corner i'm um, st- sticking with the basketball team here i uh, always love these kind of stories here <laughs> after the game um yeah the um coach gave uh harrison hookfin a scholarship nice uh, after after the game i he, he's a he's a walk-on from cincinnati area uh i love these kind of stories where coach gets together with the team and get talk about they have a speech and then at the end they're like oh yeah so and so gets a scholarship here and then and then the rest of the team just uh, gets excited uh, and all that always always yeah. enjoyed those kind of uh, stories here so yeah Harrison Hookfin now an official um scholarship uh student okay. athlete out of Ohio State <laughs> you were trying to make sure to end that without it coming across as insulting. <laughs> All right. Yep. That's it. That's the end of the episode. I um, want to thank everyone for tuning in, uh, you know, tuning in because we use radios with dials still. Right. Uh, I want to thank everyone for downloading this. I want to thank everyone for clicking the link and listening and watching and doing whatever it is. <laughs> did, did the AM dial go that low gangland? I asked the person who was an infant two days ago. <laughs> Uh, I barely remember AM bands. 
So I want to encourage everyone. Uh, nope, I have to tell you about the band first. The name of this band is called Jasper the Colossal. Jasper the Colossal, they are from Dayton, Ohio. Once again, Jasper the Colossal. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Jasper the Colossal. <laughs>